Thank you so much for joining our webinar today on how to become a project management professional. Morgan International is proud to offer the PMP exam preparation program in partnership with CertWise, a division of Holmes Corporation. This program is focused on developing and delivering exceptional educational products and experiences to serve individuals seeking professional certifications worldwide. We have two project management experts to speak with you today. You will hear from Dr. Jean Doyley. Dr. Doyley has a PMP, PGMP, uh, her PhD, and JD. Uh, Dr. Doyley is a faculty member with the Master of Science in Project Management programs at the University of Wisconsin at Platteville and Walden University. And she has over 20 years of experience in project management practice, training, and education. We will also hear from Megan Glass, PMP, and project manager at CertWise by Holmes Corporation. Ms. Glass has nearly a decade of experience in project management and curriculum development with a focus in the higher education and adult education sectors. Today's agenda is to help you understand the PMP eligibility requirements, talk about how to navigate the application process, then we will also give you a brief overview of the exam and some tips on how to approach the exam. And finally, we will talk about how to best prepare to pass the exam. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first expert, Dr. Jean Doyley. Greetings, everyone. I'm delighted to be with you today. I'm going to uh, take you on a journey in terms of um, enhance a little bit more what Mona said about um, the PMP and, and the value of the credential. And then assuming that everyone is interested in what it would take, we're going to go over the um, experience and education requirements, the highlights and lowlights to some extent of the application process, as well as some um, suggestions for preparing for and taking the exam itself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As Mona indicated, the PMP professional certification is a, a very well-respected and highly sought-after credential. Um, it is recognized internationally. Um, there are currently about 700,000 PMPs worldwide. Um, it's the most demanded project management certification. There are some others, um, but very often you'll find on job um, position announcements that the PMP is listed as highly desirable, preferred, or oftentimes even required. So it's a credential worth uh, having, and we're thrilled that you're interested in investigating what it would take for you individually uh, to apply and receive that credential. The PMP uh, validates your competence to lead and manage project teams. It lets employers know that you have a common understanding of the industry best practices. Um, it also indicates that you're serious about pursuing your interest and commitment to the profession of project management. Um, and a good indication of the value of the certification is that, according to PMI, on the average, PMPs earn 17% more than their non-certified counterparts. Um, we're assuming that everyone here today is considering earning their PMP, and what we'll be focusing on is what that will um, involve and how you can best prepare both the application process and um, for sitting for the exam. So I hope you find our suggestions helpful. And please feel free to post your questions in the chat box, as Liz indicated, and we'll do our very best to answer them. Um, between 2010 and 2020, you can see on the slide that more than 15 million new project management roles will exist globally. So this is clearly an expanding profession across many, many vertical markets. And so it's worth your interest in determining how you can best be part of that and compete um, within those industries. 
Now I'm going to walk you through understanding what it takes to be eligible to sit for the PMP exam. We'll begin with an overview of the education and the experience eligibility requirements. You can see on this next slide that there are three types of education requirement, three types of requirements, eligibility requirements, excuse me. There is your academic education, and that is split into two different um, levels, a secondary degree or its global equivalent, meaning a high school diploma um, certificate um, or their global um, equivalent. Uh, or an academic four-year degree. And I realize that many of our um, participants today are not within the United States, and so um, it would be the equivalent of uh, what we consider within the U.S. as a baccalaureate degree. And you can see, depending on how much education you've had, your project management experience requirements that you will need to meet will be different. The important thing for you to keep in mind as we talk about eligibility requirements is that there are two types of experience requirements that you're going to need to document um, for PMI as part of the application process. And you need to meet these experience requirements before you're eligible to apply to sit for the PMP exam. Um, you have uh, a requirement relating to the minimum number of years of unique non-overlapping experience, either 60 months or 36 months. I'm going to continue to five years or three years. I'll probably refer to the months as we go through um, the webinar. So that's one requirement. A second related but separate requirement is the number of hours of leading and directing projects. Um, and so we'll go on to explain those two differences just in a minute. In addition, and probably the most straightforward um, part of the requirement, is that you need 35 contact hours of training or education specifically in project management. And we'll talk about the details in terms of what that has to cover in order to count for those 35 contact hours on the next couple of slides. All right, so on this slide, we're demonstrating for you that total number of months of experience. And the important aspect here is that it's non-overlapping. So PMI describes this as unique, non-overlapping project management experience. What you have depicted on the graph in front of you shows that for project one, you spent from January through April on the project. So that counts as four months toward your five-year or three-year portion of the eligibility requirement. For project two, which overlaps to some extent with project one, May through June would count as two months toward that five-year or three-year portion of your eligibility requirement. So that's what non-overlapping experience means in terms of your months of experience or years of experience. And we realize that most project managers are working on more than a single project at one time. And that will definitely come up later. We'll explain that piece of it. So the time spent on projects one and two would equal six months, January through June. Um, and so I'm sure you're wondering now, but what about the hours that I spend on those two projects? So we'll look at that on our next slide. So here, you don't have to have um, non-overlapping experience. You can ignore the fact that projects are overlapping, as they frequently are um, in our experience. Simply consider all of the projects that you have worked on and calculate how many total hours you have spent working on those projects. Um, if you worked on multiple projects at one time, all those hours count toward the total number of hours of experience leading up to that either 4,500 hours or 7,500 hours. Now, there are a couple of additional requirements that are really important um, 
The first one is that all these hours must have accrued within the last eight consecutive years prior to your application submission. Let's just assume that you're going to apply um, to sit for the exam in January of 2017. What this requirement means is that the eight consecutive years that you're counting would start be at during 2008 and extend through the end of 2016. So if you worked on projects part-time, you may have to go back further than the three or the five years we talked about in order to document um, the accumulated hours. So the other aspect that is very important for you to remember as you're considering and preparing for um, completing the application is that to document all of these hours, you will need to align the hours with the task, knowledge, and skills within the five PMP exam content outline domains known as process groups. And we'll, you'll see that you see those process groups on your screen right now, but um, there is a lot more detail associated with each one of them. And so it's going to be important, and you'll hear me emphasize um, several times in the webinar, that you need to understand the terminology and the way that PMI defines these experiences and processes. Um, you can do that um, looking at the PMP exam outline for those areas, as well as the PMBOK and other resources. But it's very important for you to speak the language of PMI in describing all of your experiences. And I'm sure a number of you have experiences I have that in the organizations for which I've worked, um, very often we didn't describe things exactly the way that PMI indicates is the best practice. So it's important for you to distinguish um, from the way your individual organization or organizations describe these experiences and adapt to the terminology and um, components um, as reflected in the, the PMBOK and the exam outlines. OK. Um, I know I sound like I'm preaching right now, but those are really important aspects that will have a significant impact on um, making the application process go much easier for you. All right, so the education requirement, um, you have to have this before you can submit your, um, your application. And you can see there's a lot of uh, training and uh, classes that will meet this requirement, including formal academic classes or classes, courses offered by um, registered education providers, such as the CertWise folks. Um, those are the requirements. Now let's look at the, the application process itself. This process um, is a bit of an endurance test. Um, it can seem daunting. Um, and uh, we'll do everything that we can to alert you to the areas that you need to really focus on. And then um, Megan is going to describe some tools that uh, CertWise by Holmes has uh, to make the process even easier. Um, the online application process, uh, the, the application process is an online process um, that you access through the PMI.org uh, website. And you have 90 days to complete it. We strongly recommend that you complete the information and documentation in draft format before you even start the online application process. And I think as we go through the description of this process and the information required, you'll understand why we make that recommendation. Um, there's a lot of detail. It needs to be described in certain kinds of way certain kinds of ways, and it's just better to work on that offline. And then when you go online, you're all set. We're going to go on now and describe some of that detail. The first thing that um, we'll be looking at and discussing with you is your experience verification. So that includes a number of things. This is a web 
shot of the actual online format. Obviously, you need to provide your contact details, phone, address, email, et cetera, and some information about your education background. So that's pretty straightforward. But now the time-consuming part of the application begins. Um, you need to distinguish and, and document both your project management experience and your project management education. Um, the education um, documentation is a little bit more straightforward, so we'll talk about that first. Um, you need to list each course um, that you're uh, submitting as meeting your 35 contact hours of training. And you can see from the screenshot that it includes the typical kind of information, course title, institution, start and end dates. And then there's two different number types of hours, total number of hours and qualifying hours. So the qualifying hours relates to um, the difference between, let's say you were taking an MBA class that only addressed um, project management areas um, within the management domain, uh, 20 hours out of 100. And so those would be the qualifying hours. Um, the, the hours that you report need to be direct, directly related to the project management area. Um, so if you're using having multiple courses that you're counting, you'll need to list each one of those individual courses. Now, the most extensive and time-consuming and challenging part of the application process is the experience verification. Um, for each project that you're going to be counting, you'll need to give the project a title. And one of my recommendations would be to make sure this is a title that your organization will recognize. I'll make a few brief comments about the audit toward the very end of, of my portion of the webinar. But that's going to be important in case your organization needs to actually verify that you did that work. So the project title, the start and end dates, um, and that will count toward the number of months of your month's el eligibility requirements. And then you can select the role that you had. There are a number of options, and then there's an other. And identify the industry the project related to. And again, there are some choices for you to make from the drop-down box, as well as an other where you can specify um, what industry was involved for this particular project. After submitting this information, the application is going to ask for details about the organization for which you did the, the project. Um, whether that's an organization where you're employed full-time as an employee or an organization where you work as a contractor or you went in as an external consultant. You're going to need to provide some additional information about that organization as well as your job title at that organization. So that you provide the details for the organization, name, address, and a contact phone number. That organizational contact page is really asking you to identify a primary contact that can verify your work effort for the project. PMI randomly um, samples uh, applications for which they go through a more in-depth audit. And if you are fortunate, and I'm using air quotes there, to be randomly selected, you will have to provide um, verification that you actually did that work. Um, so before you submit the application, reach out to whomever you want to list here. First of all, get their permission and let them know that they may be contacted at some point in the future to verify that you actually did that work on the project. Um, I went one step further for my two PMI uh, credentials. Once I finalized my application and I was satisfied with the way that I was describing my experience in each one of the organizations where I worked, 
I, I had already contacted and verified the email and contact phone numbers for the names that I included in my application. And then I went ahead and sent them the way that I described the project. And that way, they at least have a little bit of background. In all likelihood, they're not going to need that, but they can see how the project was defined according to the terminology that PMI used. And if they should have any questions, they can reach out to me well in advance of any potential audit. So that's my recommendation. It worked really well for me. Um, you will also, for the person that you list, you're going to have to describe your relationship to them. You're, giving, um, you're given a number of different roles, project sponsor, client manager, director, primary stakeholder. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that audit again a little bit at the very end of the, my portion of the webinar. Okay, so now it's about describing that experience. And remember, early on, I recommended that you really become familiar with the PMBOK and the PMP exam content outline for each of the process areas. And this is where your pre-work is going to be required. For each project, you will list the number of hours you spent leading and directing the tasks noted in the five process groups. And then the total hours per process are added and recorded at the bottom of the application. Um, many people have questions about this section of the application. Um, and there are a number of ways that you can approach it. But the best way is to work out and estimate your time by task. Um, and you simply can't do that accurately if you're not familiar with the terminology um, in the PMBOK and the PMP exam outline. Uh, ex ex yeah, the exam outline for the process groups. Now, Megan will be talking a little bit more about this, but CertWise has a wonderful um, program that's part of the five-week online prep course that walks you through the application process so that you can do all of this ahead of time, print that out, have it in front of you when you begin your online application, and merely copy and paste. That is a wonderful job aid for you, and it really gives you the flexibility of working on that application over time without feeling like you have to be online um, and ticking away your time to complete the application. Um, okay, so next, in terms of the experience verification, you're going to need to be required to um, provide a brief summary of each of the project, each of the projects that you're listing. That includes the project objectives, your role, the key deliverables, and the outcomes. But here's the challenge. You have to do all of that in 300 to 500 characters. No, I said characters, not words. And that's another reason to do this ahead of time. You have to choose your words very carefully. Restrict yourself to 300 to 500, sorry, 550 characters. Um, and make sure that you're aligning the way you're describing your experience with the way PMI defines that experience. Here's some example um, in terms of project initiation. Um, process areas, perform project assessment, define high-level scope, perform key stakeholder analysis, identified and documented high-level risks, assumptions, and constraints, obtain charter approval. Those are all part of the project initiation process group, um, the way that PMI defines that. The section may feel daunting, but if you do um, some good pre-work, you can make sure that, that you get through it and that you've had the, the time and flexibility to do much of the work offline. So you're going to need to repeat that process that I just described for each and every project that you're claiming. And we want to remind you one final time, I guess, that 
all of the experience recorded needs to have been completed within the last eight consecutive years. That's because PMI wants to make sure that they're credentialing a project manager who's had relatively recent experience. So that is a quick walkthrough of the application process. Um, if you have questions, please post them in the chat box, and we'll do our best at the end of, of the presentation to respond to them. Now we're going to move and look at the exam itself um, so that you can get a sense of once the exam, once you have um, submitted your application, what can you expect and how can you best prepare for the exam. Um, the PMP exam, as are the, like the PGMP exam, they're four hours um, timed examination, um, which is a long time. And you want to make sure that you get a good night's sleep before you sit for that exam. It's computer-based um, most um, at most sites throughout the world. In certain instances, you may also have a paper-based exam, depending on the, on the location. There are 200 multiple choice questions. You can see that 175 of them are scored. 25 um, are used as um, pretests, so they're always developing additional questions for this exam. Um, but you won't know which is what. So you want to make sure that you answer all of them with equal care and, and um, attention. Uh, if the exam areas are secured, so you're need, going to need to show a government-issued ID. Um, and the thing to remember, another thing to remember, is that you will need to lock up all of your personal, um, uh, anything that you bring to the exam center. Um, everything will be provided once you walk into that room. Uh, scratch paper, pen, and pencil, um, calculators, etc. Anything that you need will be provided to you. You will not be allowed to take anything um, into the exam room with you. What does the exam cover? Well, it covers the um, process groups we've been mentioning throughout the webinar. Here they are, initiating planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing with their respective weights in terms of those 200 questions. Um, and you should refer to the exam content outlines I've mentioned earlier to make sure you're familiar with all of the included tasks, knowledge areas, and skills in each one of these domains. You want to, you do want to realize, though, that you know, these documents, the PMBOK and the exam content outline, do not teach these concepts. Um, even PMI recommends that you want to be familiar with these documents, but you also want to use other project management resources to prepare for your exam. I've mentioned the PMBOK, the project management body of knowledge, a number of times. Um, and it's an internationally recognized standard um, that talks about a common vocabulary in terms of identifying an individual project. Um, but one complaint that is often made about the PMBOK is that it's a reference book more than a learning book. And it's hard to use that to really understand these concepts because the PMBOK does not include examples, um, and it doesn't explain most of the concepts in any kind of detail. Um, and so that's why you'll find that there are a number of other resources that really address these concepts, including the CertWise um, PMP uh, prep course. So in order to prepare to be successful on the exam, um, you're going to need to follow um, the following steps. Take, um, either use reference materials or take a prep course, face-to-face -face class or an online class, like the five-week online course offered through CertWise. Supplement that with learning from others so that you can go over these concepts, um, have 
have a partner quiz you on some of the terminology. Um, review the um, PMP prep book or a project management uh, textbook that talks about all of these concepts. And it's a, the exam itself is uh, 200 questions, all multiple choice questions. And so make sure that you practice taking these kinds of multiple choice tests. There is a test taking art to this as well as the knowledge that you need to bring into the exam itself. And try and learn as much as you can from your peers. And if you can have a study group um, to support your progress in this area, that can be very helpful as well. So in terms of preparing to be successful on the exam, you need to memorize certain things. I wish I didn't have to emphasize that, but it's true. There are a lot of formulas that are defined in the PMBOK. And you simply need to know those formulas. Um, we've mentioned the terminology and the processes as we've gone through the webinar thus far. Keep in mind PMI's perspective. That's what you're being tested on, not what your organization is doing. Read slowly. Um, I suggest um, that you read the question carefully. You read all of the answers. And then you go back and read the question again and answer the question that's asked. It's amazing how easy it is under the stress of an exam to jump to something that looks familiar and select that. So as we mentioned, we have four hours to answer 200 questions. So you do want to budget your time. You want to answer all of the questions. There's no penalty for guessing on this exam. Um, and you are able to flag your um, questions that you want to try and come back to and reconsider. And so the best way to be successful um, is to be prepared. Um, do the study, take a class, be confident in the materials, make sure you know where the testing site is and you know how to find it, get a good night's sleep, have a good meal, and then you'll be in the best possible shape to be successful on this exam. And now I'm going to turn this over to Megan who's going to discuss um, some additional background in terms of how to prepare to pass the exam and the tools that CertWise has. Megan? Thank you, Jean. Um, as Jean has mentioned, you are now aware of all the challenges and milestones that you need to cross in order to apply for and take the exam. So I just wanted to address sort of the crux of the problem, you know, how can you best prepare to pass? So I will show you how the five-week CertWise online course is a resource that will help you through this process. It's really kind of the only resource you're going to need to help you pass the exam. Um, and I know a lot of you want to pass the exam on your first try. So let's just get started. Um, as mentioned earlier, the application can be an extremely daunting process. It's very detail-oriented. Um, and in our PMP learning system, we provide an interactive application prep worksheet. So this can help you to organize and record all of your project and education experience. So we have each of the five domains listed out, as well as all of the identified tasks within that domain. So we really try to help walk you through every single action or process that you might have taken within that domain to help you add up those hours and feel confident before you submit that in your application. In addition, um, the interactive aspect is once you've input all your information, the worksheet will automatically summarize the hours that you record. So you can watch those add up, you can make sure you've met all the requirements, and you can have this ready for when you're going to start the application online. So using this application is helpful to prepare, but it's also helpful if you do get audited and need to show greater detail about your experience and have your experience verified. So if you take the five-week online class, you will have access to this tool, but you will also have access to an instructor who can help you with any of the application prep questions that you may have. So we really encourage you to start looking at this when you first start the class, when you start, first start getting prepared for the PMP exam. Um, and that way you can really use all the resources at your disposal um, to ensure that you're ready and you're confident. Then in terms of the education hours, um, 
If you still need to acquire your 35 hours of formal project management education, this five-week course is a complete project management study system. So that means that it will cover in five short weeks those 35 hours of formal project management education. It's a PMI REP approved program, so it was designed specifically to give you everything you need to pass um, on your first attempt. Part of the system is, um, as Jean noted earlier, the PMP exam tests you on your understanding of the exam content outline and also elements of the PMBOK guide. So our system has books that will help you learn better than you could on your own because these reading materials include and align with the exam content outline in the PMBOK guide, but it's really easy to read. We include a lot of things that those sources don't have, like case studies and examples and test taking tips and um, example questions so that you can really gain confidence before you sit for the exam. It's designed to prepare you for it. It's not just a reference guide um, like those other resources are. In addition to the books that you'll receive and then the five-week class with the instructor online, you also have access to an online reinforcement area for 12 months. So this section um, includes a lot of different tools like an interactive glossary, interactive flashcards, there's printable flashcards as well, a resource center with just a lot of other um, information on specific topics if you need more information. There's an online discussion area for you and other students as well as enrichment videos. Um, and one of the really most important tools and most useful tools for a lot of our students are the reports. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the practice questions that we have. So the system itself has over 900 online practice questions in addition to ones that are included in the reading materials itself. So the interactive reporting I was just talking about is related to these online quiz and test questions. So what will happen after you take a quiz or a test is every question that you answer will give you a rationale. It will refer you back to in-text reading if you need more information about that topic. And it will also help you to track your weakest areas because it gives you a full analysis and a breakdown of where um, you're sort of struggling. In the pretest, it will tell you kind of which chapters you're really good at and which ones you're, you might need more work on. Um, and that's a really helpful tool to guide you through the system as you work through the materials. In addition, um, just so you're aware in terms of being ready for the exam, there are different types of questions on the PMP exam. We've listed them out here. And essentially what that means is some of them are going to be knowledge-based questions, so it might be pretty straightforward to see if you understand a particular concept. Another one might be situation-based or interpretational where they'll give you a scenario and you have to figure out the answer from the information they've given you. There's also a certain number of formulas that you'll need to have memorized, and they'll test you on those, as well as just how the processes fit into the PMI framework. So they have the five domains. They've got 10 knowledge areas. They have a certain order that these processes are supposed to be happening in, and you'll need to know what that order is for some of those process-based questions. So our learning system includes all of these different types of questions, so you know that you'll be prepared for anything that the exam might throw at you. And with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Liz, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about our special offer today. Great. Thank you so much, um, Megan and uh, Dr. Dorley and Morgan, for all of your insights today. Um, before we do our Q&A session, we do have a special offer for webinar attendees. So for, to thank you for spending some time with us today, we are offering you um, $200 off of our August 4th through September 8th online course session. Um, if you are interested in this class, you can see up on the screen there's a discount promo code. You just need to go to the um, Morgan International site. Um, we're going to leave that URL up on the screen for a bit here so you can write it down. Um, but you just go to that website and enter in the promotional code that you can see on the screen. This information will also be sent out to you in a post, um, post um, email, a post -conf uh, webinar email, so you can have the details to help you take advantage of that special offer. Um, and with that said, I'm going to um, start taking some questions for our um, experts. We have several questions that came in here today. 
Um, I'm going to start with the first one. Um, is the process for the PMP similar for the, the CAP-M? And I think that's probably a good question for, for Dr. Dorley. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yes, the whole application process is. Of course, the credential means something quite different, um, but the, the way that you go through the application process is very similar. I think you'll find, um, at least I did, I found the application process um, between the PMP and the PGMP very similar as well. <laughs> the only difference was I needed to document once again all my project management experience and then go on to document all of my program management experience. So, um, but I think you would find it if you've gone through that, then you understand the overall process. Great. Thank you so much. Um, the next question is, how would a prod PMP help in the insurance and banking sector? I don't know if either of our experts have some insight into that question. I'll take that because I did a good bit of um, external consulting work for um, Deutsche Bank and Bankers Trust um, when they were merging. So um, depending on what kind of uh, internal organizational processes need to be improved, any kind of um, creative, innovative effort that they're going through to either update their internal processes or develop a new product, um, project uh, management would be very relevant and as a way to um, manage those kinds of initiatives. So I hope that helps. If we have time, I can give you lots more examples. My experience with Bankers Trust and um, Deutsche Bank, it was the only time I actually built a project management schedule um, down to the minute because we were actually transferring um, control of the internal processes from one organization to another. And uh, we did a lot of dress rehearsals. That was all planned and scheduled. Um, so that's just a practical example. Great. That was really helpful. Thank you. Um, this is maybe somewhat of a similar type of question, but I think worth um, sharing with the group. Um, do you have any idea on how an interior designer can earn those five years of project management? Um, I can take that one if that's right, Jean. Um, sure. Basically, any any project is project experience. So whether that's one client's worth of work that you've done an interior design project for, that's a small project. So you're going from initiating by getting that initial contract with them, working through executing, monitoring, and controlling the quality, all the way through to finishing that project. So that is as PMI defines it, you know, a very specific beginning and end um, where you go through all the parts of that process. Sometimes it feels like the majority of your time is spent only in one area, which is, you know, executing, but that's definitely typical. And that's one of the things that's kind of talked about even in the, the prep materials. It, it doesn't have to be a really long, drawn-out, year-long project to count as a project, but it will mean that when you're recording your experience, um, you might be recording a lot of different entries in there, depending on the length of each of those. Gina, I don't know if there's anything you'd want to add to that. Yeah, one of the things, particularly if you're just getting started or you're not currently working as a project manager but you're hoping to uh, break into the profession, um, you don't want to overlook uh, volunteer opportunities. Uh, you know, for um, any organization, uh, very often, for your church or for your community, if you're volunteering your time, you're working on a project, or you can volunteer your time to, to manage the project for them. So that's, a, that's another opportunity. And, and I want to really emphasize that um, I'm old enough to be considered an accidental project manager. When I, you know, I started managing projects, there wasn't a position or a role that was clearly defined as a project manager. And so it's not so much your title but it's your role. It's what you're doing for any given initiative. And it can be within your organization. It can be for any other organizations, um, as long as you can document the experience. So don't overlook volunteering or internships or anything like that 
um, that can help you accumulate those hours. Even within your organization, you could volunteer just to get some additional experience and move your career forward. Thank you for those um, great insights. Um, the next question I'm going to share is, I'm wondering if you could expound a little bit on the non-overlapping project management experience. There was some confusion on that topic. Right. Um, yes, I, I can see why there's the confusion. May, basically, it's the years that or months that you've worked on projects. And non-overlapping just means for any given period of time that it only counts once. So let's say I'm working on three projects at right now um, within my organization. Um, I can only count the time that I'm spending where those projects overlap um, once. And that's, that's to distinguish the years or months of experience from the hours of experience. Within the hours, you can record and count all of your hours in those three projects that I'm working on simultaneously. So I, I hope that helps. It is a bit confusing. There are two different standards. You know, and from a project management point of view, it's the elapsed time that you're working on projects that relates to that first years or months of experience. And that's what the example I gave, that all of that time, which is non-overlapping, needs to um, occur within the last eight years before you apply for the um, exam. So watch that. Um, in, in my case, I needed to make sure that my some of my most relevant experience for my PGMP didn't go off of the, the cliff in terms of being able to count for it. So it, that can help you plan as well. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I think we still have time for a couple more questions. Um, this one is in regard to, um, it, well, let me just read it to you. If someone were with a different working background, for example, marketing or any other field, wants to do PMP, how can they fulfill the eligibility requirements? That might, that might be similar to the question that you just answered, but I don't know if maybe you could just touch on it again real quickly. But let me just, um, I, I, you know, I think we need to think of life as one big project um, when you're considering um, applying for the, the PMP credential. In other words, as long as you're doing work that has a start and an end date and create some kind of unique deliverable, so any kind of marketing campaign, you know, any kind of um, IT development that would lead to being able to market in a different way, um, any kind of work where you would be looking at um, doing an evaluation of how your clients are evaluating your, or assessing your product, um, customer service satisfaction, all of those can be considered projects. So, uh, you know, I, I think we need, although we talked about making sure we use the terminology that PMI uses, be very broad, as Megan was saying, in terms of looking at what can be considered a project. Okay, thank you so much, Jean. Um, okay, the next question is, um, how, oh, we, we did cover that one. Um, Here's, I have completed MS Software Project Management. Will that help me in exemption of project management experience requirements? The MS Project, um, I'm not clear on the question. If the question is that you've completed some training <clears throat> on MS Microsoft Project, which is what I'm assuming the questioner means, um, uh, then that would certainly, could certainly count for your 35 hours of um, project management education, yes. Great, thank you. Um, how can you leverage a PMP with an executive MBA in terms of career development? Ah, that's a great question. Um, Megan, sorry for jumping in, but I get that all the time from um, my students that are, are pursuing either master's or doctoral degrees. 
Um, I think the strongest possibility in terms of career advancement is that you not only have a PMP or an academic degree, but you have both. Because if you have an executive MBA, what that shows is that you um, have prepared yourself as a leader to think strategically. And with your PMP, what that shows is you're serious about the value of project management in terms of that overall value proposition, in terms of helping organizations accomplish their strategic goals. And so it's a dynamite combination, whether it's an executive MBA or an MBA. Um, it also shows that you have a continuing interest in both the profession of project management and um, the academic, what's being developed and learned um, within an academic context in terms of successful business practices. So that's a dynamite combination. And I think you would compete very well um, with those kinds of uh, uh, complementary credentials. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Dorley. Um, with that, I think we have to wrap things up for today. And I just wanted to thank everyone for spending time with us to learn more about the um, project management professional certification, the uh, application process, and eligibility. And um, everyone from Morgan and CertWise would like to thank you very much for spending your time with us today. We hope it gave you a better understanding on the qualifications and how to obtain your PMPs. If you have any questions, you can contact our team anytime and schedule a, a free consultation session. And with that, we will conclude today's webinar. Thank you so much.